Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at how to z-call, also known as depth calling, for your translucent materials, which is going to be a necessary step when you're trying to do any type of special effect for your characters that involves transparency. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. Okay, so on this side we have a character who's been properly depth called, and on this side we just set the character to transparent. And so now we can see like all of the internal geometry and the internal geometry is just an aesthetic thing that they did for this mannequin. It's not there in the Unreal 5 mannequin and it probably won't be there in your own custom characters that you create like in Blender. Um, but we do need to get rid of it for this mannequin and even if you don't have internal geometry, you still need to do depth calling because you can also see like his arm drawn through his body you can see his other leg drawn through this leg here. So over here on the depth cold character, in addition to getting rid of the internal geometry, his arm is not being drawn through his body. And also the same thing for his legs. The, the leg closest to the camera is occluding the leg behind it. And so this is a really quick and easy process. So let's go ahead and see how it's done. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make a copy of the base material for the mannequin. And again, you find that in the starter content. And in the last video, we saw what all of these were and how they work. So in this video, we'll just focus on the material itself. So let's go ahead and copy it over to our work folder because we don't want to overwrite the original. And we'll go to our folder and let's rename it. I'll just rename it Depth Call. And let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so in the last video, we took a look at what all of this was and how it works. So in this video, we'll just focus on the depth calling itself. So what we need to do is set this up as sort of like a base material that'll be used for any custom effect that involves transparency. So to do that, we'll start by coming down here and we'll unselect use material attributes and then we'll break this out. And then we'll go ahead and we'll hook everything up. We remember from the last video, that we had base color, we had metallic, we had roughness, and we had opacity mask, but we're not going to hook that in because the opacity is going to be handled by the depth calling itself, so we'll skip that, but we'll go ahead and hook up the normal map. Then we'll come back to the material, and we'll change it from a masked material to a translucent material, and we notice now that we just lost a whole bunch of our options here. So what we're going to do is scroll all the way down and we'll see under the translucency section for lighting mode, we're going to change this to surface translucency volume. And now we have our options back. And then we'll scroll down some more. And this is the shadowing for the translucent volume. Now because this is a base material, we're just going to turn the first two off and we can set them on the specific effect that we're doing, but this is just the base depth cold one, so we don't need them on for now. So the first one, the shadow density scale, this is the world shadow, so like his shadow on the wall or the floor, and then the self shadow is shadows on his own body. So we're gonna turn them both off for now. Now, just keep in mind that when we go to actually use these, you will have to go to the character himself and you'll have to activate the translucency volume for the character. You just search for shadow and you'll see it right here, volumetric translucency. We'll turn that on when we actually get to a specific special effect. But for now, we'll leave it off. Let's go back to the material. We'll also need to render this material in the custom depth pass. So we'll go ahead and type in depth and it's gonna be right here, allow custom depth rights will activate it there and this we do have to activate for the character so we'll type in depth and under the rendering section for the mesh we'll say render custom depth and we'll go ahead and activate it there and we'll go ahead and save it and let's go back to our material and so now our material is set up to receive the depth calling and so how we're going to do that is we're going to create a material function and then call it in and use it as a material layer. And we kind of saw how that worked in the other video when we took a look at these. So now let's go ahead and make our own from scratch. 
So we'll go back to the content browser. All right, let's go down to the content browser and we'll right click and we'll go to materials and textures and we'll come over here and select material function and we'll rename it. I'll just call it MF underscore depth call. And let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, let's start by making the function first and then we'll go through what each part is. So we'll come all the way to the side over here and we'll start with a scene texture. And we'll change this from scene color to custom depth. And then we'll come out of the color here and we're going to mask out the R value. And then we'll do a divide node and we'll plug this into the bottom and we'll get a single constant and we'll put in the value of 8192 and we'll plug this into the top and then we'll come out of here and we'll do a subtract and then let's come down here and we'll search for pixel depth and again we'll do another divide and we'll plug this into the bottom and we'll plug this into the top. Then we'll come over here and we'll do an add node. And then we'll take out another single constant. We'll plug it in and we're going to set this value to 0 0.0001. And then we'll plug this into the subtract. And then out of here, we'll do a seal node. And then we'll do a clamp. and we'll leave it at zero to one. And then we'll do a lerp. And we'll actually plug this into the alpha. And we'll set the default for A to 0.5. And we'll set the default for B to zero. And then we'll plug that into the output. Okay, now let's go back and see what each one of these are. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the scene texture node here. So the first thing we did was change it from color to custom depth. And then let's go ahead and read the tooltip. It says that this will compute the depth difference of the current pixel to all the pixels around it. So it's going to run that comparison on every pixel on the character. And so it's going to start by taking out the R value. And again, since we changed this to depth, the RGB changes to XYZ and we want the X axis and the value that's coming out of there it's going to be a really complicated value and it's going to look something like this and that value it's a little too complicated and it's going to kind of mess up the calculation so we need to simplify that value down and so how we're going to do that is we're going to take a large sample of screen space and we're going to divide it by this value. And so it's kind of like saying 50 over 100 will still return the same value of 0.5. But again, we're not dealing with something as easy as 0.5. We're dealing with this complicated number here. So let's go ahead and simplify it down. And so where I'm getting 8192 from is if we go to our calculator and if we're thinking about screen space, we're probably familiar with numbers like 512 times 2 equals 1024 times 2 equals 2048 times 2 equals 4096, but we need a larger sample, so we'll times it by 2 again and we get 8192. And now that we have a simplified x value, we want to subtract from that the value of the next pixel over, which is what this is judging. So that new pixel, we're going to take his x value, and again, he's going to return a complicated number, so we'll simplify it down using the same process. But now, before we subtract it, we want to add to it 0 0.0001, and the reason why we're doing that is, let's go over to the character again. Now, if we go straight up to the pixel depth and we start deleting, we might accidentally delete the character itself. So what we want to do is go that 0 0.0001 further and we'll start to see the internal geometry. And that's where we want to start deleting the pixels from. 
So let's go back to the material function. Okay, before we move on, let's just remove this right here. And let's just make sure that we understand what's happening up to this point. So we have pixel A, and that's being compared to pixel B. And we're taking the depth of pixel A, and we're subtracting it by the depth of pixel B. And again, we added a small bias here, but that's just to make sure that we don't accidentally delete a pixel that we don't want. So if we put this in simple terms, let's say the current pixel is a depth of 10 units away from the camera, and the pixel we're comparing it to is a depth of 11 units away from the camera. Now it would actually be 11.0001, but let's just keep it simple. Let's say 10 and 11. So 10 minus 11 would give you a value of negative one. So anytime we see a negative value, we know that pixel A is closer to the camera. And then on the flip side, if the current pixel is a value of 11 and the pixel we're comparing it to is only 10 away from the camera, then 11 minus 10 would give a value of positive one. So anytime there's a positive value, we know that pixel A is further from the camera and it's behind another pixel. So we need to delete all of the positive values. So how we're gonna do that is we'll move on to over here and we do a seal node. And so what a seal node is, is it's always gonna force it to round up. So you're probably familiar with rounding in terms of this, where if it's halfway, it rounds down and if it's more than halfway, it rounds up. Well, the seal node forces it to always round up. And after it rounds up, we're gonna clamp between zero and one. So again, any negative number is gonna round up and clamp at zero, and any positive number is gonna round up and clamp at one. So now the zero represents all of the pixels that are close to the camera, and the one represents all of the pixels that are behind another pixel. And so that value, either zero or one, is gonna go into the lerp, and if it's zero, we're gonna give it a value of 0.5, and if it's one, we're gonna give it a value of zero. And that value is gonna be passed through the output of the function, and we're gonna call the output opacity underscore out, okay? Now let's go ahead and apply that to the character real quick. So we'll save it and let's go back to the base material and we'll come down here and we'll do a function call and we'll call in the function that we just created which was the depth call and we have our opacity out and we'll just plug that in real quick and let's save and compile and then let's go back to the content browser all right, and now we want to apply the depth calling material that we just created. So let's go ahead and select it, and we'll apply it to element zero, which is for his body. And we can see that it's already starting to take effect. And also, he just lost his shadows, and that's because we turned shadows off for this material. And now we want to apply the depth calling to his logo. But remember from the last video, that's a material instance. So let's go ahead and create that. And we'll just call it MI logo. And let's go ahead and open it up. And we want to activate the plastic override and we'll set it to true. And we want to activate the normal map and we'll set this to the logo normal map. And let's go ahead and save that. And we'll close this. And now let's go ahead and apply this to element one. And now if we zoom in, we can see that he's properly depth cold and he retains his normal map and his logo and his other attributes like metallic and roughness. And now there's just one more thing that we need to add to this. So let's go back to the material function. Okay, so currently the opacity out comes from this static value of 0.5. But in actuality, we wanna receive this value from other material functions. Because remember, each function is another layer on the base material, and each layer will be used to produce a different custom effect. So how we stack these layers on top of each other is we're gonna come over here to the beginning, and we're gonna put an input node, and we'll call this opacity in.
and we'll change it to a single scalar and we'll just drive it all the way over to here and let's go ahead and save and apply that and then if we go back to the depth calling layer it's telling us there's an error because now it's expecting that opacity in so that's going to come from the other material layers but we haven't created those yet so we're just going to put a placeholder we'll bring in a single constant and we'll put it back to our default of 0.5 and we'll just plug that in for now and now we'll save and compile and now let's go back to the content browser real quick okay so i just pulled this character in and quickly created some additional material layers to help me demonstrate so this is the character that we've been working on so far and he has the basic depth calling layer and this character has additional layers that control his opacity and refraction and i also turned on shadows for him and so how he works is if we go back to this character what we would do is we would call in those additional layers and he would have his outputs that would drive this opacity and he also has outputs to drive the other attributes that he needs he could also for instance drive the metallic and roughness to scale up or down with the opacity and then he also requires his own inputs and those could come from other material layers or they could also come from parameters that we'll set up but this is a more advanced concept so we'll save this for another video in this video we just wanted to focus on the base uh, depth calling layer okay that was just a quick demonstration on how to depth call your character and get him ready for some more advanced custom effects i hope that helped please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in another video